Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com and this is a very important surgeon question and answer session all about the lifelong management of heart valve disease. I'm thrilled to be joined by Dr. Wilson Zito, who is the Chief of Cardiovascular Surgery at Penn Presbyterian Medical Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. During his incredible career, Dr. Zito has performed over 5,000 cardiac procedures, of which more than 2,000 involved some form of valve repair or valve replacement. Dr. Zito, are you there? Hi, Adam, how are you? It's certainly a pleasure be, to be here today. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, Dr. Zito, I'm real excited for this conversation. And before we get into the discussion about the lifelong management of heart valve disease, I'm real curious to know, uh, when did you feel like you knew you wanted to be a cardiac surgeon? It goes all the way back to when I was 18 years old. I was a senior in high school, over spring break, um, I had the opportunity to spend a week in the hospital. And I was very fortunate to have had the opportunity to shadow a cardiac surgeon. Um, I spent a week with him and I saw the compassion, the expertise, the knowledge uh, that he possessed. And boy, what an impact he had on those patients. And spending time with him in the operating room, seeing what he could do to really make lives of patients better. And I knew then that that was the path, that was the professional career that I wanted to do uh, for the rest of my life. That is a, a great story, Dr. Zito, and I'm glad you had that aha moment. And now maybe we can talk about valve disease. There's so many things available to cardiac surgeons that they could focus on, atrial fibrillation, coronary artery disease, transplants. Why did you uh, choose valve surgery to be such a big part of your practice. I think all of medicine is amazing. It's an absolute privilege to be someone's physician. But what really drew me to cardiac surgery and specifically valve surgery uh, is the impact it has on patients. And from a very sort of a technical physician's perspective, the anatomy, the physiology, and the treatment options that are now able to be offered to these patients, to me, in my mind, is just so elegant and so rewarding that I was drawn to it immediately when I was starting my training in cardiac surgery. When, when you talk about valve disease and the, its lifelong management for patients, Dr. Zito, how is this disease maybe different from some of those other cardiac disorders? That's a, also a great question, Adam. And all, all heart disease is serious. Uh, and of course, I don't want to minimize any other type of heart disease. Valvular disease, uh, as you've alluded to, uh, oftentimes for many patients, it's a lifelong process. It's a journey. Um, it often starts as simple as a murmur incidentally heard on someone's chest when their doctor put a stethoscope on the chest. You can imagine the anxiety that would cause a patient. Oftentimes these patients start out feeling well and over time, working with their physicians, progress through this lifelong journey of the natural history of valve disease. And I think that to me is what is so interesting that you're able to form this bond, this relationship with your patient over time, understanding their needs and also understanding what their lifelong goals are as they pursue this journey of life. When we talk about uh, patients having that diagnosis and maybe learning that they have a murmur, um, what might come next for patients? Is this a disease that could progress over months, years, decades before perhaps they need some kind of intervention? And that's a great question too, Adam. And I, I think this is exactly what draws me to valvular disease. And, in, and again, I have a, this is a tremendous privilege to be at someone's physician's. And as you can imagine, most patients come in scared, nervous. Oh my gosh, what did I do? Uh, is this something I did? Um, and the answer to all of that is no. And it, the key is an awareness of your medical condition like anything else, hypertension, diabetes. Awareness allows you to manage this valvular disease process appropriately. Most patients, fortunately, it is a slow progression over time. So it allows you to build this bond with your physician, understanding the best treatment options now and also in the future. And I think 
that is what's so special in terms of my relationship, working with these patients as their patient advocate, trying to reassure them that under the right guidance, working with the right physicians, that your life is gonna be okay. Um, as long as you're aware and you're treated appropriately, it is gonna be fine and we'll work through it together. And I think that's the key message that I wanna pass on to patients out there. Dr. Zito, I have to ask, how does all of the uniqueness of valvular disease motivate maybe you and your entire team at Penn Medicine to create a lifelong plan for your patients? I think you hit it right on the head. And I think it is also a privilege for me to be at an institution such as Penn Medicine where we can leverage all the expertise of all the different specialties, all the research we have here, all the knowledge that we can share and cross fertilize. In I think the heart and vascular center here at Penn, the multiple stakeholders, the multidisciplinary approach, cardiologists, interventional cardiologists, primary care physicians, advanced practitioners, surgeons like myself. And again, this is the part that I wanna stress, the partnership that is important also includes the patient. The, the process of a share decision making in the management of valvular disease is a concept that we're embracing. And I think it is the right direction we're going. Dr. Zito, uh, what I can tell you from my own experience of having valve surgery 15 years ago and what I talked to a lot of patients, an often underlooked part of the lifelong management of valve disease is this possibility of a reoperation. So many times we're so focused on just getting past that first surgery, we don't think what might be happening down the road. So I've got to ask you, are reoperations something that occur for your patients? That's a great question. And reoperations, reinterventions absolutely do occur. And the younger you are, the more relevant that question is, obviously. And I think this strikes the exact point uh, that I want to make, the importance of it, that it is a lifelong management. What a particular patient um, needs are today may be very different. And reoperation options can also evolve over time with technology. A young patient will have needs that are different today versus 15, 20 years down the road. And understanding not what I can do as a surgeon for you today, but also how that impacts your options for reoperation or reinvention 15, 20 years later is extremely important. And this is really where that shared decision making comes into play. For me to understand what that patient needs are today and how do I then best position that particular patient to have all possible options in the future for reinvention is absolute, absolutely essential in making sure that this lifelong plan fits a specific patient and is tailored to his or her needs. Dr. Zito, I'm, I'm wondering, what are your top considerations for patients as they think about managing valve disease throughout their life? There are lots of considerations. That I think I would say number one, understand uh, and do some research. Uh, right now with leaders like you in social media, I, I think in, in the information age, uh, I think it's easier now. And I love working with an informed patient. I think that is absolutely key because I think that's how we leverage uh, each other's knowledge. Uh, I get to know a patient a little bit better and the patient gets to know me better. And an informed patient is absolutely, absolutely important. Uh, number two, each patient's different. Each patient's at a different part of their life when I meet them. I think each patient needs to do a little soul searching and understand what their life goals are, not only what they plan to do in the next five, 10 years, but what their overall outlook in the next 15, 20, 30 years. I think a patient needs to understand what their needs are and what they want to do with their lives. And then lastly, I just want to say to patients that once you've done the homework and once you find a partner, i.e. a physician or physicians or a team, every decision that you make is the right decision. There's no wrong decision. And I want to just let patients know 
oftentimes they get hung up on, doctor, am I making the right decision? And my response is, if you've done the work and you've talked with your partners in healthcare, every decision is the right decision. And, and I think that's important for patients to understand that. There are no wrong decisions. Well, Dr. Zito, um, I got to tell you, as a, a patient, uh, the amount of comfort I think other patients are going to have hearing your top considerations are, um, they're just fantastic. And I'd encourage anybody, uh, if you get to that point where you forget what you need to do, do your homework. Uh, think about buddying up with a great cardiac care team and uh, know that you're doing everything right. You're doing everything that you can in, in this time in your life and as you plan your uh, lifelong management of valve disease. And Dr. Zito, I can't thank you enough for these insights today. Uh, I, I know this information is gonna help a lot of patients uh, out there and thanks for everything that you're doing there at Penn Medicine. Adam, thank you very much again for having me. It is certainly a pleasure and a privilege to be here. Um, and, and it's been um, a fantastic conversation. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks again, Dr. Zito. And as we always say here, keep on ticking. Thank you. <laughs>